All right, I don't know how you look at this. Fortunately or unfortunately, I actually had some more time to put together some plays to make another training tape. Uh, you will also be happy to know that there are no holdings on this training tape. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make one, a separate one, just to deal with holding. But there's a lot of uh, offense and defensive pass interference as well as defensive holding that I thought would be good for you going into your games this week. So there's 24 plays. We'll try to bang through them real quick so that it's not uber long and you can have time to watch this before your game. All right, the first play is just a reminder about scrimmage kick formation, okay? Um, right here, this team punts the ball here. It's fourth down, as you can see on the clock, and it looks like the, let's see, three and five, eight yards behind the snapper. Uh, just be aware of the situations like this only because roughing the pass, roughing the kicker, uh, if there's implications on that, do we have five numbers, 50 through 79 on the line of scrimmage, all that kind of stuff. And it's also good, uh, I'll let you know, especially for the deep guys, to let, uh, if you're a referee and you use the O2O and you have a situation like this where they do punt the ball, because if the deep, if the deep guy is not looking into the backfield, he just might think it's a high pass, and if he hits the ground, he may wave it incomplete. So just, just, uh, just a little reminder about scrimmage kick formation, and you could talk about the do's and don'ts of what goes on with scrimmage kick formation fouls. All right, uh, next play, we're going to talk about a, uh, a blindside block. Uh, we're going to look at the wing back, number three. Okay, and he's going to go downfield. And then we have a backwards pass here, it looks like. Yes, we do have a backwards pass here. We should have a punch back by either one of the wings on this situation. But what I want you to do is this guy, if you're the deep wing, which he does recognize this, he is going back towards his own line of scrimmage. And people who do that just have bad intentions in their mind. Because the only thing they're going to do right here, block him in the back, or we're going to have an illegal blindside block here. And as you can watch on this scenario, boom. You can call either or. I would rather you go for the bigger foul and get the illegal blindside block, which the field judge pays attention here. Because uh, the line judge got the backwards pass. So line judge, once you see this catch, your eyes should immediately go to this matchup. You might be able to help here just in case your field judge has something else going on. But just want to give you an example. This is an illegal blindside block, which we get, and it's a great job here by this crew. Uh, next play, unnecessary roughness. Uh, a lot of times we, we only think about unnecessary roughness and late hits out of bounds on the defense, or in this case, the uh, the kick the the kicking team. I want you to watch this running back. Okay, he delivers a blow right there. We can't let running backs have it both ways here. So I'll slow down this play, and he steps out of bounds right here, and he continues north and south here. And this defender gives up because he knows that he stepped out of bounds. So if we're hitting a whistle here. And this, this running back goes up, delivers a blow, and knocks this guy to the ground in this situation. That's a foul on the offense. Because the runner can't ask for protection, but also run upfield and deliver a blow like, like he does here. Now, in this situation that we're watching here, this is not a foul. Uh, it doesn't knock the defender to the ground. But I just want you to be aware that we can also have a late hit on the runner on a, on a situation like this. Next play, another unnecessary roughness, and I talked a little bit about helmet fouls prior, uh, and a lot of these fouls, when we talk about UN, and I, I'm sorry to use vernaculars, UNR, unnecessary roughness, they happen out in the open, and it's just hard to, if we don't get them, it, it makes it difficult to, to give you all a break and, and defend you. So here's a situation where line, the headlinesman right here is, is uh, officiating the catch and the touch. The, the referee should be moving over at least towards the hash and looking up the middle of the field. And watch what happens to number 16 right here. Comes down, the guy rips his helmet off. All right. Uh, I'm not, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't know uh, if the rule book it says helmet opening and or face mask is a face mask, but this would be a situation where if you weren't sure whether he grabbed the face mask or not, he grabbed the face mask. We can't let people just rip the helmet off of a player like this and let it go uncalled. 
Okay, so um, referee, I would hope that you would be looking up the field to see something like that. And again, uh, on that particular situation, since the helmet was caught, pulled off directly because of the face mask, we would allow number 16 to keep in the game. However, if we don't call it, then we're stuck sending number 16 out uh, for a game. Uh, next, we're going to look at number 52. And, and uh, on the def well, it's, we're punting, so he's going to be on the kick return team. And watch what he does here. Uh, so we have a punt, and he's trying to get, let his guy go downfield. If he stays right here and keeps position, we're good. But now you can see he's pulling, and he throws the defender to the ground. Yeah, we could have a hole, but then on top of it, he just jumps and jumps on top of him and punishes him. Okay, we can't let we cannot let uh, players do this to other players because it's just going to cause a big headache for us later in in the game. So, either a flag for a hold or a flag for an unnecessary roughness is good in that situation. Uh, next play, we're going to talk about intentional grounding mechanics. So. Intentional grounding, uh, I know coaches get confused because they think their game's on Saturday or Sunday. There is no tackle box. There always has to be a receiver in the area. Okay, so let's watch this play right here. Quarterback throws the ball right over the head of number seven. I understand that number seven had to be probably 12 feet tall to catch the pass, but that receiver is in the area. And watch what the, watch what the line judge does right here. He points. He makes it very clear to everyone that this player is in the area. There's no question whether or not that player is in the area. Also, there's no problem with getting on the O2O and telling the referee, refer, Mr. Referee, number seven was in the area. Number seven was in the area. Then we just move on. So then if you get on the O2O and do that, then the partner, if, if the defensive team is on the other sideline, one of the wing or deep wing can relay it to the coach, but coach, there was no foul for intentional grounding. Number seven was in the area. So good mechanics by this crew on this, on this situation. Next, we're going to talk about uh, defensive pass interference, DPI. Uh, we're going to watch the matchup at the top of the screen here. And there's a, there's a lot of things that we have to consider when we have DPI. Is the defender playing the ball? Does he get into him early? Uh, are they both making a valid attempt to the ball? So let's watch what happens at the top of the screen with the matchup. So we have two people looking back for the ball, but now he's not looking back for the ball. So he's totally in chase mode. And we know with chase mode, even with illegal blocks in the back and such, any co early contact to this wide receiver with this DB in chase mode is a foul. So as you'll see here, he rakes the arm early, and we get a foul for defensive pass interference. Great job here. Let's watch it again. And I'll say this. Even if he was playing the ball, this early rake by the arm is defensive pass interference. So good job here getting this foul. Next, uh, another defensive pass interference. Uh that the least earlier one was early contact. This one we're going to categorize as a hook and turn. Okay, we're going to watch the uh, I think it's the number two receiver here, and uh, if we're talking keys, side judge, head linesman, right? Now we have doubles, so this makes it difficult. So uh, let's rewind a little back here. So once that receiver comes in motion, now we know the head linesman's got both of them, and the side judge gets that deep key. So referees, we have to recognize we have trips. So you have this tackle, and the line judge has that tackle. Okay, just a little key note here. Watch what, this, watch what happens to this receiver who then cuts over the middle. The ball was thrown, hook early, turn. Okay, I will, I will give you a word of caution on this, and this is what I'm taught. You see how he hooks the arm right here? He hooks the back arm, definitely restricts him early. If he, his hand is on his hip, be uber careful because he could place his hand on the hip and reach around. It's the pooling action that gets it. 
So when I see a grab on the arm, a spin and turn, I know for a fact that's a, that's a hook and turn, but we have to be a little bit more careful whenever we have it on the hip. But let's watch this again. We get it, and uh, the deep wing on that side does an excellent job. He, he transitioned from his key, who is not threatened. Instead of officiating in space, he looks in here and gets this foul for a hook and turn for defensive pass interference. All right, next play. Another defensive pass interference that we're going to look at. And look at my notes here. This this one's a tough one, okay? We're going to look at this matchup right here, and this is uh, the field judge matchup. When we have stack right here, we're going to let these players declare. So if this guy goes downfield, this guy runs over the middle, the L's going to take him, the F's going to take him. So this one I'll chalk up to. I don't know if this is, is or isn't a DPI, but we're going to talk about what what uh, what our thought process should be in this situation. So to me, it looks like he gets into him early. Um, let me slow the film down. So we got them both playing the ball right here. They're allowed to feel each other. What we cannot let the DB do is push him or ride him out of bounds. But if we're watching the play here, to me, I'm not sure if that number 20 on the defense gives this receiver a shove or their feet just kind of get tangled because they're playing the ball. So that's up to you to make that determination. I don't have a good look at it from this play, but I, I think what we have to do is make sure that we're officiating that con that that matchup the way we're looking at, both playing the ball. If the, if the DB gives him a shove going for the ball, then that is a foul for defensive pass interference. However, if we, we deem that the uh, feet get entangled here and they go to the ground because there's just entanglement, since both players are looking back for the ball and trying to play the ball here, we would not have a foul for defensive pass interference. If the DB was not playing the ball and we had in feet entanglement or contact like that, that would be an easy early contact not playing the ball foul right there. Another defensive pass interference we're going to look at at the bottom of the screen. So this matchup down here. This is hard to see, but it's a definite early contact, not playing the ball. First, take a look at our, our uh, field judge's mechanics in position, great position. He throws the flag, and I'm getting excited because I didn't let the play play through because it's such a well-officiated play. Boom, lag, touchdown. Let's watch the one-arm signals. So he finished the play. He just didn't quit officiating while he uh, threw, the, threw the flag. He noticed the touchdown. Great job. And uh, I want to caution you. Some, some people will sit there and say, well, we shouldn't throw the flag because there is no, uh, the guy, the receiver makes the catch for a touchdown. Uh, I want the flag thrown because the last thing I want to happen is us to say, oh, he caught the ball, so it wasn't defensive pass interference. And then one of the wings have an illegal motion or illegal shift, which then we penalize the offense for when, we, in fact, we should have had a offset on the play. So uh, let's let's not use that philosophy anymore about if the, even even if there's defensive pass interference, let's not throw the flag. So we will throw the flag here. This is great officiated play here by this field judge. All right, defensive holding. Okay, defensive holding is similar to offensive holding. We look for indicators here, and then after we see an indicator with restriction, we go, and it's a two-step process. We find the ball. Okay, so on this one, we're going to watch the number three wide receiver, and first we're going to look at the indicator that we have. So, And a lot of DHs, I'm sorry, defensive holding DH, happens on double moves here. Okay, so let's move a little forward. So double move here, right? He's he's breaking down, faking that he's going to the outside, which makes this defensive back settle, stop his feet. Watch what the defensive back does. He is now beat, right? Uh, let's rewind it back. He is now beat right here because his feet are stopped and he has nothing to do. He reaches out. You would think my skills with this would be better. He reaches out and grabs, and now there is a clear. So the indicator, he's beat. 
He reaches out, grabs the receiver, and now he definitely takes a step away here, okay? And I'll say this, this is a very difficult play for you all to officiate because we have a line judge who is responsible for two people, okay? So uh, it's, it's, it's extremely difficult. I'm just putting this on here to show the difference with a defensive, what a defensive hold is. So once we see this restriction right there, excuse me, let me rewind back. We see the restriction. We see the restriction. Step two is we go back and find the ball. We see the ball that's in the, the quarterback's hands, and he is looking to this side of the field. So we have a foul for defensive holding at this point because even if the quarterback doesn't throw the ball and he runs, he was looking in this area, and that's, that's a uh, foul for defensive holding. If the quarterback has just released the ball and you look back and the ball is right here, that is a, you immediately throw the flag and we got a foul for defensive holding. Okay, Because when you saw the restriction, the ball if you rewind back, would have been in the quarterback's hands. If you see this restriction and the ball is right here and it is going towards this player, the ball was not in the court. You can make a deduction that the ball was not in the quarterback's hands the time the, that the time the restriction happened. And now we have a, DPI, a defensive holding, DH, that turns into a DPI. So the, although this is a it's a it's a difficult thought process, it's hard to slow yourself down when you see these in the game. When in doubt, make it a defensive pass interference if you're not sure. Okay. Watch this again. See the hold. Look back. Quarterback with the ball. He's running. He's running. We should have the flag for defensive holding, and I'm not sure that uh, the enforcement. So I'm not even going to say it. And also hit out of bounds, right? It's real tight. If you feel that the hits in the it starts in the white before the white, then it's let go. Um, to me, I'll make this comment. I felt like the quarterback was giving himself up. He wasn't running north and south. This defender didn't have to take this blow. I would have I would have definitely had a supporting call for a late hit out of bounds on this one. All right, let's. Now we're going to look at the tight end, and we're going to compare what we saw for defensive holding with the tight end here and the player before. So we have indicator, right? Number 11, beat, reaches out. But do we have the restriction? We see a slight jersey grab, right? Not enough restriction to call for a defensive holding, right? Oh, not restriction. Quarterback's even looking over there, throws to him. He makes the catch. Um, that would be like you know an, an offensive hold. You wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to be down on an offensive hold here where the guy runs right through. So uh, I just want to show you the difference between what is the previous play and what is not a restriction, not restriction for defensive holding. But in both cases, we see indicators. That's the our indi our antenna should go up. Our our eyes should be in here, and that's our indicator that there's a potential for defensive holding. Runs right through it. No foul for defensive holding. All right, offensive pass interference. And uh, th we have to not only think about what the defense can and can't do, we also have to think about what the offense can and can't do. The offense can't block downfield or in a pass that crosses the line of scrimmage we, prior to the pass crossing the line of scrimmage or being touched beyond the line of scrimmage. They cannot push off. They cannot pick. Okay, And most of what you will see here, is uh, these these few there's push offs so we're gonna watch this matchup at the top of the screen here, and pass. Watch that little and you see that little push and I know it doesn't look like much but watch what it does to the def the defensive back here. They're playing the ball and that little shove right there knocks him off his balance and he can't play the ball. That push if it does not displace him. Is not enough for defensive pass interference, but here it displaces him, right? So we would want to flag down for offensive pass interference, even though the pass was incomplete. I don't want us to judge a judge a offensive pass interference or defensive pass interference on the on the laurels on did was was or was not the pass complete. Okay, we're gonna watch the matchup at the top of the screen here. Same scenario.
both looking back for the ball. Watch that little shove here by the uh, offensive player. Pushes him on by, tries to make the catch. That's a push off enough for an offensive pass interference. So what I'm going to say here is I know this is the side judge's key. It might be that little push in the back right there may be difficult for him to see. Okay, I'm not sure if he gets straight lined right in here or not. I would think he could see this. But also, once the pass goes in the air, and this is something that was taught to me, and it's it's pretty stupid when you think about it, but it's true. When you're a, when you're a headlinesman or line judge, when the ball is released, think about your head snapping from snap, snap, to where the ball, don't watch the ball, because never in the history of football has the ball gone up and not come down. So try to train your eyes to snap from player to player, not player, ball, player. Because if you snap right right when the ball's being thrown, you're most likely going to see that push off too and may also be able to get that offensive pass interference right there. All right, illegal motion. Uh, we know a, a, the motion has to be parallel, right? Sometimes we'll get a player that shaves, which we're okay with, but we're looking for steep angles here to call illegal motion. So here's a situation. I threw three plays on here. What is, what isn't. Watch the motion by this guy. It's a little bit forward. If he turns his shoulders abruptly upfield prior to the ball being snapped, then we'll have illegal motion. But I call this shaving. This is a good job not calling illegal motion on this play. Next play. This is more pronounced, right? He's going definitely forward, and he also starts to turn his shoulders upfield prior to the ball being snapped. So right here, this is a foul for an illegal motion. We get it. Good job here focusing on that. Third play, illegal motion again. This one I think is even more pronounced, and you'll see that uh, you'll see that by the slot guy at the bottom. Watch he, and it's that motion right there. It's the hop, hop, turn, right? Hop, turn, goes forward. I'd even support you killing this for a false start. Watch it again. Hop, turn, goes forward, ball snapped. Uh, we can't let them get those running starts up the field on plays like that. Uh, I put this next play on. It's a false start slash encroachment play. Where Let's just talk about the mechanics of the situation. Crew does a good job getting the play right. We have defense jumps in here, killing the play, and we have a false start up here on the play. Uh, this crew correctly puts it on the defense, but what we need to do is we're going to probably have a flag up here and a flag up here. This is where my preaching of you running into the backfield wings. Have a discussion in the backfield, okay? It should be, I had, you know, if you're able to see the whole line, great. You can, the line judge comes in and says, I had the defense jumping in prior to the offense moving. Great, let's put it on the defense, okay? That discussion should happen in the backfield away from the referee. The referee's over here letting you have your discussion. The umpire's coming up here managing this whole situation here because everyone's pointing at the other person. Um, and the head linesman and the line judge are back here in the backfield discussing the play and determining what the foul should be called here. But in, and so in this case, it's definitely that the defense jumps in prior and the crew does a good job. If by chance we have simultaneous movement, we put simultaneous movement on the offense. Uh, legal formation. Uh, so if you're, you're able to, if you're one of the crews who watch your, watch your teams prior, okay, you should know whether your tackles are, are slow or fast. Okay, so here we are early in the game, and we have the ball snapped from, looks like the 32, 32 and a half yard line. I don't like to nitpick this stuff, but okay, is his head touching the snapper? That's only for this, this guy who's looking right down the line to notice. But if I'm watching this, I'm noticing, man, He's starting to creep back. I got to talk to both of them because they're starting to get an advantage because I'll bet you dollars of donuts this tackle slow feet, okay, because he's he already knows that he's going to have trouble blocking that guy. So he's getting that little bit of advantage. Look, he doesn't even get out of his stance, okay? He just catches the guy, 
and this guy's uber fast, and he and he knows it, so he's cheating back. So I'm talking to him, but if it is clear and obvious, I'm flagging it for an illegal formation. Okay. So we don't clean it up. Look what happens to us later in the game. So here we have the ball snapped almost on the 45 yard line, and look where he's lined up right now. Both of them. Okay. Because if we count. And I know you count seven on the line, but I like count back, backfield. One, two, three, four. This guy is not on the line of scrimmage. Look where his head is. We have five in the backfield, which means we only have six on the line of scrimmage, okay? You can even make a case right here that this tackle also is not on the line of scrimmage. So we, have, we cannot allow them to have uh, to, to cheat back and gain an advantage on situations like that. Uh, we talk a lot about putting receivers where they want to go. Okay, looks like right here, this receiver's on the line of scrimmage covering this tight end. We can't, this, we can't put this receiver in the backfield because look where the ball snapped. The ball was snapped from the 36-yard line. He, his foot is right around the 36-yard line. That's where he wants to be. If his foot, for his instance, was back here, if his front foot was back here, then we could say, oh, well, he's in the backfield. That's where we can put him. But this is another two-step process in, in eligibles downfield. We know that if, we, if they run the ball here, we don't have a foul. But once the pass crosses the line of scrimmage, as it does here, we have a flag down for ineligibles downfield like we do. Okay, we have three more plays, then we're done. This is an extremely difficult play. Uh, I'll say this, excellent job done by the referee, not ball watching. Two, there's two parts on this play. I said there was no holding, but I did put a holding on this play. The referee following the quarterback, and then he finds some matchup to watch right here. He watches this matchup, and he does, he does a great job. He gets that uh, flag for uh, a hold. But what I want to watch here is we're going to watch this receiver right here. Okay, extremely difficult play. But since we have trips to this side, the referee is watching this tackle. Line judge here, you got to focus a little bit more on those receivers, okay? Because watch what happens here. Speed it up a little bit. We have 14 that's going deep that's pressure in the field judge. We have this guy who's coming out to the flat, which our line judge's head should be on him because he's threatened right now. He got a receiver. He's got a guy on his back. Watch what happens to this receiver. He tips back. He steps out of bounds on his own, comes back his first to touch the pass. We should have a flag down for an, an uh, illegal participation. I believe the, the foul is. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. The other thing that might help was as the ball is in the air, the other person, the field judge, may get a look at this because he steps out right prior and his key comes into that area. Again, very difficult play to officiate, but mechanically, we should have a hat down when the receiver steps out of bounds and then a flag down when he is the, fir when he's, when he is the first to touch the pass. Last two plays are rough, running or roughing into the kicker. So rule of thumb with ru running and roughing. If the plant leg is hit with force, it is roughing the kiffer, kicker. If the kicking leg is hit with, we have running into. So right here, we call running into the kicker. I would have, again, I would if you, the referee would have thrown roughing, I would have been fine with this too. The only thing I ask this crew, and it's, it's tough here, is this player blocked into the kicker? Uh, it doesn't appear that he is. If it, I mean, there's a little bit of contact. Doesn't look like there's an outward shove there eh, a little bit. But did that was that force enough to knock him into the quick kicker? Only the referee and maybe one of the wings can help him with that. And as you can see on the next play, we get another running into the kicker, but we pick up the foul, and it's because looks like we deem that this player pushes the defender into the into the kicker which is fine if that's the case that that's what we think 
I support your judgment for picking up the play flag, flag for running the kicker. All right, uh, that's it for this tape. Keep up the good work. You guys are really, guys and gals are really doing an excellent job. So uh, if, if any questions on this film, please don't hesitate to ask me, and good luck this week.